So we're standing here at an elevation of about 5,900 feet on the flanks of Mount Hood, just above Timberline. And we have <clears throat> near us Pinus albicollis, which is one of the highest pines in North America. This species here, Pinus albicollis, or white bark pine, in combination with Tsuga mertensiana, or mountain hemlock, often compete with each other in defining our timberline. So Tsuga mertensiana, the mountain hemlock, and Pinus albicollis, our white bark pine, are the highest elevation conifer species in North America. The key characteristics of our Pinus albicollis are the needles, in terms of the overall appearance from a distance, they'll often look fairly densely packed on these very flexible stems. And then on closer inspection, you'll find that each of these needles has five needles to a fascicle, or five needles to a bundle. Whereas a lower elevation pine species, the Pinus contorta varlatifolia, has only two needles to a fascicle, and typically a much straighter bowl. Um, in terms of the overall growth form of your Pinus albicollis, typically your Pinus albicollis has kind of a Krumholtz appearance, especially as it matures, and especially at higher elevations or those really wind-swept ridges. So the Krumholtz or twisted, contorted appearance is a key characteristic. Pinus albicollis also has these very, very flexible stems. And those flexible stems enable them to bear the heavy snow loads in winter. So it's very well adapted to these higher elevation environments. It's designed to be able to carry those heavy loads of snow. And in fact, as we've seen climate change and our snowpack decrease, we've also seen a decline in the Pinus albicollis um, in terms of their vigor and their numbers. Um, and that's in part because the snowpack actually acts as an insulator in winter and then throughout the summer, as the snow from the glaciers is being released, from that, the glaciers and snowpack is being released, it provides additional moisture to the tree in these very well-drained soils that don't receive a whole lot of precipitation in summer. So the bark of our Pinus albicollis, or white bark pine, is typically kind of grayish to silvery in color at higher elevations and, and relatively smooth or scaly. At lower elevations, it will typically be a darker gray to almost brown and with deeper scales, almost furrows in the bark. Um, a couple of other key things to note about this. This is very, very important ecologically. A lot of wildlife species depend on this tree, everything from your small mammals to grizzly bears in Yellowstone and birds such as the Clark's Nutcracker. In fact, the Clark's Nutcracker is in essence a forester, if you will, for the Pinus albicollis. So the Clark's Nutcracker really enjoys eating the seeds from Pinus albicollis cones. And it will actually cache many of these seeds, in, <clears throat> sometimes even in the soil. And in caching those seeds, it actually, in essence, will plant trees. So it may forget some of those caches or just not come back to them. Um, and so you end up with a whole new generation of Pinus albicollis planted by a bird, the Clark's Nutcracker. Some of the additional impacts to your Pinus albicollis include white pine blister rust. So it's been severely decimated by the pathogen white pine blister rust. And in fact, there are areas that you can fly over in British Columbia, <clears throat> Washington, Oregon, where you can see whole stands of the Pinus albicollis that are um, seeing very high rates of mortality from white pine blister rust. And even in this sand, unfortunately, I, I see evidence of white pine blister rust. So a really cool species. <clears throat> if you're up at Timberline, the two species to be looking for are the Pinus albicollis, white bark pine, and Suga mertensiana, your mountain hemlock. So Pinus albicollis, or western white pine, has actually been listed as endangered by the IUCN. In fact, a study done in the mid-2000s estimated that white bark pine had declined by as much as 41% in the West Cascades. 
Two of the major contributing factors to this decline are white pine blister rust, or Quinertium ribicola, and the mountain pine beetle. The white pine blister rust is actually a fungal pathogen. Currently, there have not been a lot of effective control strategies to manage for this fungal pathogen. Um, however, there are some disease-resistant species down in the Sierra Nevada of California. So there's been um, some attempts to actually propagate more of these more disease-resistant species for other locations.